This is Rohit. So, so good evening, my dear friend. Good evening, my dear friend. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And a nice evening again. We are all back. And then today we are going to deal with two aspects. One is the objects clause of memorandum of association, and the second one is the alteration part. And followed by time permits, I will deal with the doctrine of ultra virus, the most important doctrine. I have already given you five important questions for internals. Those five you separately write and separately mail because that is first internal. Second internal also you will get in the same way five more questions later on. You have to answer them. You have to send assignment separately to my mail. You have to send first internal separately to my mail. Second internal separately to my mail. This is the program. Accordingly, marks will be awarded. And then prepare well the best yes, prepare well the information. Information. And some of you mute you you your mics because you can you put mics, video, but the mics won't. Video, but the mics won't. Sir, uh, I have a question. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, sir, uh, sir uh, can you uh, send, uh, we can send the assignment in both way, right? One scan copy also and also uh, we can type and send, right? Original booklets you can't give to me. Original booklets you can't give to me. So, you can, so when you write in hand, you write by hand, you have to scan it and send. By hand, you have to scan it and send. Okay. okay. And also we can send by okay. typing also, right? Sir? You can send by typing also. You can send by typing also. Put into a spiral into and then the spiral, spiral you will submit, spiral to, the you will submit to the class. Right, sir. Done. Right. Done. Thank you. So now, wow. so now we are halfway wow. through. And uh, by August 8th, we will be closing down the session. August 8th is the last part. So, mostly every day we are meeting by and large. Either I will send you some material like yesterday. Yesterday, I think I sent material or day before yesterday. Yesterday, sir. Material. And uh, otherwise, there will be a class. Either there will be a class or there will be some material sent. Somehow, I will keep you engaged so that uh, you will get some material otherwise and then you put a file and then all these things, whatever I send, whatever you also download, you keep them in a particular book. Yesterday I have given you the proposed amendments also. No? So all those things you please take care. And now friends, now this lecture is basically on the objects clause of the memorandum of association. We have seen the name class, then we have seen the register of his class. Now, the third important class of memorandum of association is the objects class. Now, what is the importance of this objects class? In fact, friends, this particular objects class is stated under section 4, subsection 1, clause C. Actually, earlier, there was a different preposition. The objects class must have the main object and subsidiary objects today that has been taken off. And then under this particular section four of 2013 act, the provision is that under 4.1c, the, the memorandum of association should state the objects for which the company is proposed to be incorporated and any matter considered necessary for furtherance thereof. That means for furtherance of reaching the objectives. So a particular, as a lawyer tomorrow, a particular company's scrutiny has come to you. And then they say, this particular company uh, is having a fundamental question as to the decision as to further expansion. Then the question comes, what is the basis of objects class? Now, suppose objects class says it is for manufacturing face powder. You can't manufacture gunpowder even though it is in demand. You have to necessarily then amend the memorandum of association's objects class. Then whatever you can add up, if you the majority agrees, phosphorus or bottle, then you can proceed off. 
That is the most important aspect you are supposed to consider with regard to the objects clause of memorandum of association. Under the 1956 Act, there were different uh, propositions. Forget about all that. Today, the situation is different. What you have to see is now the new companies under 2013 Act, the objects for which the company is proposed to be incorporated and any matter considered necessary for furtherance thereof only has to be stated in the objects clause of memorandum of association. This is the most important aspect you are supposed to consider. Then friends, the further aspects before we go to the alteration that I had to tell you, section six says the Companies Act will override the memorandum and articles that I have already said. Once again, I am bringing it to your notice. And then the section eight is concerned the objects would be with regard to, so, the promotion of commerce, art, science, sports, education, research, social welfare, religion, charity, protection of environment, and any such other object, and then dividend should not be distributed. That is under section 8. And then uh, word limited can be omitted. And then the binding force of the memorandum and articles stated at section 10, as I already told you, that that would be binding both the documents are binding and then with this particular background i will now take you to the particular objects clause of memorandum of association with regard to the judicial interpretation then i will come back to the alteration now what is the judicial interpretation number one the objects of memorandum should be clearly set forth in the Objects clause of the memorandum of association for a company can in fact do only what is within or incidental to the objects stated in the memorandum of association. And this objects clause defines and confines the scope of operations of the company, the powers of the company. This is what you have to write in the examination where it's a 20 marks question. Then the next important aspect is the legal personality of a company exists only for the particular purpose of incorporation as defined in the objects clause. In fact, several judgments I have given you, Portman versus Program. Earlier I have given you that. And then I have told you that in Portman versus Program, the money of the shareholders, how he is utilized would be known to them and the extent of company's powers also. Then there is one more judgment, Egyptian Salt and Soda Company Limited. Egyptian Salt and Soda Company Limited versus, versus Ports Said Salt Association. I have already given you this citation where it was said, in fact, held that the members will know how their money uh, would be spent up and then utilized these two. In addition, I will give you an important Supreme Court judgment. This is the case of LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India versus Escorts Limited and others, most important case. Life Insurance Corporation of India versus Escorts Limited and others, where it was held, in fact, take the citation, AIR, All India Reporter, 1986, Supreme Court, 1370. All India Reporter, 1986, Supreme Court, page 1370. In this case, the Supreme Court held that a company functions on the basis of a company functions on the basis of and regulated by the Companies Act and its memorandum of association. And the memorandum of association contains the objects clause of the company for which the company is incorporated and the area of operation is hereby restricted as per the objects clause of the memorandum of association. So while giving the English citations, 
you also give an indian citation always you make a habit cultivate a habit that along with the english citations in the modern context what would be the indian courts decisions same or a little bit different solomon versus solomon company case i told you i also asked in the ss assignment today internal the indian scenario what is indian scenario re condoli company limited case i told you that was the first case even before the solomon case was decided in london it was decided in india in calcutta i told you that and you can go back you can see the earlier citations i gave you so based on that you have to understand the indian scenario the decisions of the indian courts and then accordingly you can proceed off then friends the next important aspect is the company can do anything one the company can do anything which is incidental to and consequential upon the power specified what does it mean the objects which are stated to achieve those objects the company can do any as for example running employees payment of salaries gratuity such and such facilities all these things will come into picture at this particular so friends what you have to understand here is this is a citation given by attorney general versus attorney general versus ge railway company ge railway company and then in this particular case it was held that there would be express and implied objects to a company in the memorandum express objects or which are set out in the memorandum clearly implied or which are incidental and ancillary to the express powers to achieve them for example my company's objective is to manufacture face powder engaging employees payment of gratuity salary and all those things will ultimately come into picture which are incidental to achieve the main objects they need not be stated it is not necessary they are implied in the same way there is an important english citation queens bench foster versus foster versus london chatham c h a t h a t a m chatham and dover rail company dover rail company 1895 queens bench mostly in the initial stages concepts are concerned in company law we will find number of english cases and nowadays i am giving you the support of indian courts also so in this particular case a company acquired a piece of land for the purpose of its railway and then what is it railway railway means railway track not trains railway track then the railway was erected on arches the company left the arches as workshop etc and then the company let the arches for using it as workshops and then ultimately the neighbor subjected and said it is against the objects clause and it is ultra virus the court of law held that it is incidental to the powers of the company and incidental acts or anything that would ultimately enable the company to achieve the main objects so that this is valid and it is intra virus but not ultra virus in the same way there is one more important judgment ferguson versus wilson ferguson versus wilson where the court held that the incidental acts include appointment of agents servants payment of gratuity 
and then pensionary benefits and such and such employee benefits all these things will come under this category of in fact uh, the incidental acts then friends an interesting judgment in 1902 english court i give you which is uh, in fact uh, about uh, the activities which are not incidental which is against the objects clause this is london yeah, london county council c o u n t y county council c o u n c i l london county council versus attorney general attorney general 1902 in this case the council had the power to run trams tramway and also run mini buses to feed tramway that means passengers to be transported so to run mini buses now the court held that it is not incidental and then it is against the main object to payment of salary is different running this kind of uh, mini buses is different it should be included in the objects clause hence it is not included the court said it would not be permissible then friends <clears throat> there is another interesting case stephens versus mysore reeves brackets kangundi kangundi brackets close mining company limited in this case a company which has a main object together with number of subsidiary objects could not continue to pursue the main objects so the court of law said the subsidiary objects after the main objects came to an end cannot be created so that in fact the company has to be closed down today the situation is different to in fact avoid confusion i have given this citation that today's case is different that there is no main objects and subsidiary objects but there would be main objects and implied objects express and implied express which are stated under the provision of section 4 and implied which are to be taken incidentally to reach the main goals that is how you have to take in the earlier concept of main subsidiary and all that would be ultimately ignored this is what you had to do with regard to the 2013 companies act and then <clears throat> another important aspect re-amalgamated syndicate 1897 this is a judgment of english courts where it was held that a company was formed to erect stands and then galleries to let out seats to view queen victoria diamond jubilee possession the memorandum authorized the company to carry on all kinds of promotion business and act as house agents and then a lot of work has been done unfortunately the company lost heavily <coughs> money <coughs> in this venture and the directors ultimately in fact uh, ultimately could not resume the company and then they wanted to ultimately pursue subsidiary objects but the court of law said since the main objects came to an end nothing can be done and then the company has to be wound up and then there is no other remedy here so these are all the things you are supposed to take into account with regard to the memorandum of association and then this particular objects class then friends the most important aspect now we are coming to alteration of articles of association simultaneously i am telling you the alteration part also as is the case with the name clause and then registered office clause objects clause also what would be the procedure for alteration in this case friends the alteration concept is concerned <clears throat> here section 13 subsection 8 deals with this subject 13 8 what it says a company which has raised money from public through prospectus and still has any unutilized amount out of the money so raised shall not change its objects for which it raised the money through prospectus unless a special resolution is passed by the company first important thing take it for granted 
to amend the articles of association, a memorandum of association subjects laws, there should be a special resolution passed. Second, the details as may be prescribed in respect of such resolution shall also be published in the newspapers, one in English and one in vernacular, and which is in circulation at the place where the registered office of the company is situated. And it shall also be placed on the website of the company, if any, indicating therein the justification for such particular change. Then the dissenting shareholders shall be given an opportunity to exit if the, any shareholder dissents, to exit by the promoters and shareholders having control in accordance with the regulations specified by SEBI. We have to see SEBI regulations for exit of, in fact, shareholders in that particular situation. Exit means purchase their shares, pay their money and ask them to move out. So what you understand here, the most important aspect is that if the alt objective clause has to be altered earlier, it required confirmation from the company law board. I myself earlier used to appear, but today it is not necessary. The objects clause can be altered with passing a special resolution. That is with three foot majority of the members present and entitled to vote. But what you had to do is, you had to necessarily, the details must be published in English and vernacular newspapers. And then if there is any dissent, the dissenters can be, can exit as per the SEBI regulations in this regard. This is the most important aspect you are supposed to understand. Earlier it was CLB permission, now not necessary. And whereas for name class and then for registered office class, approval is from central government. I hope now you understand this. Whereas objects yes, approval is not necessary, but uh, the special resolution with publication in the newspapers, most important aspect. Then the most important thing is that apart from that, the registrar shall register any alteration with respect to the objects clause. This is under section 13, subsection 9. Now what I told you, special resolution and all that is 13.8. Now whatever is now I am going to tell is 13.9 that the registrar shall register any alteration with respect to objects and the certify the registration within a period of 30 days. Special resolution has to be intimated to the registrar within 30 days. Then later on, within 30 days there on, the registrar will <coughs> register it and issue a fresh certificate of incorporation, fresh, sorry, fresh, the objects clause. And then in accordance with clause A of subsection 6, that is 13.6. So 13.8 and 9 must be read, then come back to 13.6. Then 13.10 says that no alteration is permitted and effective unless it is registered in accordance with the provisions of this act. In substance, what you learn here, you have to, under section 13.8, pass a special resolution, give paper publication. Any dissenting shareholders arise, then you give them exit as per the SEBI regulations. Over. Next, inform the register of companies, section 13.9, and then read with 13.6, then the registrar will register it within 30 days from the date of passing in form. Within 30 days from the date of filing, the registrar will register it and issue a fresh certificate of memory, this alteration. Then the alteration is effective. Otherwise, under section 13.10, the alteration is invalid. So these are all the basic provisions <coughs> pertaining to <clears throat> this particular law of objects clause of memorandum of association, objects clause of memorandum of association and the alteration of the objects clause of memorandum of association thereon. So friends, when we are discussing the memorandum of association, I have told you in general what is memorandum of association and then I have told you the definition. I have given you the general briefing and the general understanding of it. In that point, with memorandum of association discussion, 
you must also quote the judgment of lic versus escorts in general observation on memorandum of association then the clauses under that the name clause we have seen then we have seen this register of his clause and these are all the clauses essentially to be put whether it is a private company or public company a government company it is immaterial all these clauses are supposed to be there even a one man company without that the company cannot be incorporated registration cannot be done then we have seen today the objects clause of memorandum of association wherein certain english cases some indian case like lic versus escort where the objects clause is highlighted and importance has been stated thereon and then the implied the conditions and the express the objects which are express and which are implied and then the various english and indian cases wherein you find that earlier under 1956 act the provisions were that there would be main objects and subsidiary objects but today it is only the objects as they are stated and whatever is there to in furtherance of the objects but what you have to understand is the implied of in fact objects and the express objects implied means the activities like which are incidental essential to reach the main objects and express means as they are stated in the memorandum of association in all old uh, memorandums prior to 2013 registered companies you find their main objects and subsidiary objects but subsequently it is not necessary the objects are stated enough but which are implied you have to take into account the case law will stand good and which are express also must be taken into account and the lic's case is a landmark judgment of supreme court in this regard which every student i have given citation every student must necessarily read that particular judgment lic case i repeat air 1986 sc supreme court 1370 1370 this is the most important judgment download and then read thoroughly and then make out in the examination point of view three four sentences some important sentences you can make a mention then the alteration is concerned the alteration of memorandum of association you have to take section 13 read with 13 8 13 then go back to 13 6 and then come back to 13 6a i mean to say because uh, the Uh, 13. This is for special resolution, and 13, 10. These are all the most important provisions pertain into the objects clause of memorandum of association being altered. So, friends, with this particular background, we conclude our discussion on the objects clause. And tomorrow, I will conclude the residue clauses. And if time permits, tomorrow I will continue with the doctrine of ultra virus. or the following day or so we will take up the doctrines there are five six important doctrines including the prospectus rules of golden legacy and all these doctrines one by one i will take you through so we have got sufficient time and we will go ahead with it don't worry and coolly complete the assignments i have given and then come back to me so tomorrow again we will meet at 6:30 and then continue with this residue clauses of memorandum of association very well my dear friends thank you very much and then thank you sir good day good night bye good night thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.